Hey there, Ryan here, and I'm going to show you how to make a mortgage calculator in Excel. With this spreadsheet, you can type in the details of your loan and everything else updates automatically. The payment schedule is laid out for you, and you even have space to enter extra payments for any month, which also update the numbers so you can see the impact of how a few extra payments can really speed up the repayment of your loan. And if you don't have time to make it, you can always get a copy via the link in the description. That being said, let's get to it. Starting with a blank Excel workbook, we will first add in the formatting to make the spreadsheet look nice and user friendly. Go ahead and click here to select all cells, right click on the column headings, select column width, set the size to 22, and click OK. Then right click on the row headings, select row height, set the size to 25, and click OK. Then up in the ribbon, change the vertical alignment to middle and the horizontal alignment to left. Increase the font size to 12. Click the down arrow next to the fill color button and select this light gray here. Let's also turn off the grid lines by going to view uncheck grid lines. Next, select column A, right click, column width, set the size to 5, and click OK. Select column H, right click, column width, set the size to 5, and click OK. Then select row 1, right click, row height, set the size to 30, click OK, go to Home, bold the font, set the fill color to dark blue gray, increase the font size to 14, and change the font color to white. Then select cell B1 and type in Mortgage Calculator. Okie dokie, now we're going to start adding in some borders, but before that, we need to update the border color. Click the down arrow next to the borders button and set the line color to this gray here. When you do, Excel might go into draw borders mode and you can tell because your mouse icon will look like this. To turn it off, go to borders and select draw border. Awesome. With the border color updated, go ahead and select the range B3 through C7. Go to Borders and click this to apply all borders. Next, select E3 through G4 and apply all borders. Now, the next range that we'll apply borders to is really big, so we're going to use this box up here to help us out. This is called the name box, and we can use it to quickly select a large range in a spreadsheet. We want to select the range B9 through G610. So to do this, type in B9 colon G610 and press enter. Excel selects the range for us, and we can now apply the borders. And in case you're curious, we're making this range large enough to accommodate a payment schedule for up to a 50-year loan. Might be a little excessive, but it doesn't hurt to have a little extra space just in case. That being said, we have one more range to add borders to. Click in the name box, type in I9 through I610, press enter, and apply all borders. Fantastic. At this point, go ahead and pause the video and enter the following values into these cells. Once you have them, select B3 through B7, bold the font, and change the fill color to a slightly darker gray. Then select C3 through C6, set the fill color to no fill, Change the horizontal alignment to center. Select C7. Bold the font. Change the fill color to a slightly darker gray. Change the font color to dark red. 
and change the horizontal alignment to center. Then select E3 through G3, bold the font, darken the fill color, change the horizontal alignment to center, select E4 through G4, bold the font, set the fill color to no fill, change the font color to blue, and change the horizontal alignment to center. Then, to save some time, let's use the Format Painter tool. Start by selecting E3 through G4, and click the Format Painter tool up here near the top left. This will copy the formatting and allow us to apply it somewhere else. For example, select cell E6, and the formatting is applied. Pretty awesome, huh? Anyway, go ahead and select cell E3, Click the Format Painter tool again, then click and hold your click on cell B9 and drag to cell G9 and release. How cool is that? Okie dokie. Next, click the down arrow next to the Borders button and select More Borders. Change the border color to blue-gray and click this to apply a bottom border and click OK. From here, Click in the name box again, type in B10 through G610, and press enter. Set the fill color to no fill, then click in the name box one more time, type in G9 through G610, and press enter. Then click the Format Painter tool to copy the formatting, and select cell I9 to apply it. Awesome. We'll add a few more formatting touches at the end, but for now, let's get to the formulas. Start by entering in the details of a sample loan like so, and I recommend that you enter the same sample data that I do so you can verify that your formulas are working correctly. Once you have it, let's begin by calculating the monthly payment. Select cell C7 and enter the following equals if error function minus round function pmt function c4 divided by 12 next argument c5 times 12 next argument c3 close parentheses next argument 2 close parentheses next argument 0, close parentheses, and press enter. Now, how does this formula work? The PMT function, otherwise known as the payment function, takes the rate, number of periods for that loan, and the loan amount itself, and gives you back the period payment for that loan. Since our period length is in months, we do have a little math inside of the function. We have to divide the annual interest rate by 12, since there are 12 months in a year, and we have to multiply the number of years by 12, since we want our period length in months. Now, the payment function gives us the payment as a negative value, and this is because, from our perspective, as the person paying back the loan, the payment amount is going away from us to the lender, so that's why it's negative. For the purposes of this spreadsheet, though, we want to make this a positive value, so we just add a negative here. From there, the round function rounds the number to two decimal places, and finally, the if error function returns zero in the case that there's an error. Really, this only applies whenever we clear out the info in C3 through C6 to start over. The if error function simply returns zero instead of an error code in cell C7. And that's how the formula works. Next, select cell B10 and enter the following formula. Equals C6 and press enter. Then in C10, enter the formula. Equals C3. In D10, enter the formula. Equals C7. In E10, enter the formula, equals round function, C10, times, open parentheses, 
dollar sign C, dollar sign 4, divided by 12, close parentheses, next argument 2, close parentheses, and press enter. This formula calculates the interest based on the loan balance for your first payment. Next, in cell F10, enter the formula equals D10 minus E10. This formula simply subtracts the interest amount from the total monthly payment to give you the amount of principal that you're actually paying off with this payment. And finally, select cell G10 and enter the formula equals C10 minus F10 minus I10. This formula calculates the ending balance after the first payment by subtracting the principal amount and any extra payment that you make from the loan balance. Okie dokie, that does it for the first row. Now for the second one. Start in cell B11 and enter the following. Equals if function G10 equals zero. Next argument quote dash quote next argument e date function b10 next argument 1 close parentheses close parentheses and press enter now if you see a weird number here just change the number format to a date like this awesome now this formula simply checks to see if the balance is zero yet if so you get a dash if not you get the date for your next payment Moving on, select cell C11 and enter the formula, equals G10. Then in cell D11, enter the formula, equals min function, C11 plus E11, next argument, dollar sign C, dollar sign 7, close parentheses, and press enter. This formula calculates the loan balance plus interest and compares this number to the monthly payment. It then returns the minimum of the two values. In most cases, this will return the monthly payment. But when you get to the end and what's left to pay off is less than your monthly payment, it will simply return that number instead. All right, for the last three formulas, just select E10 through G10 and use the fill handle to copy the formulas down from above. Fantastic! To complete the table, you could select B11 through G11, and then use the fill handle to copy the formulas down to row 610, but let me show you a faster way to do that. Click in the name box, type in B11 through G610, and press enter. Then use the shortcut Control D or Command D for Mac users, and that will copy all of the formulas for you. All right, now for the summary formulas on top. Start with cell E4 and enter the following: equals max function B10 through B610. Close parentheses and press Enter. And again, if you get a weird number here, just change the number format to date. Next, select F4 and enter the following. Equals count if function D10 through D610. Next argument, quote, greater than zero, quote, close parentheses and press enter. This formula counts the number of payments above zero, which is the total count of the payments that you have to make. Next, select G4 and enter the formula equals sum function I10 through I610, close parentheses, and press enter. Then select E7 and enter the formula equals sum function E10 through E610, close parentheses, and press enter. Then select F7 and enter the formula, equals sum function F10 through F610, close parentheses, and press enter. 
and finally select G7 and enter the formula equals E7 plus F7. And that does it for the formulas. All that's left now is some finishing touches to make the spreadsheet look super professional. Let's begin with the payment schedule. Select cell B9 and change the horizontal alignment to left. Then click in the name box, type in B10 through B610 and press enter. Then right click and format cells. Under the number tab, select date and pick a date format that you like and be sure that your location is selected here. Now, if you don't see a format that you want, you can always build your own. Click on custom and under type, use a combination of M's, D's, and Y's to build your date format. Once you have it, click OK. Now for the rest of the table, go ahead and click in the name box. Type in C9 through G610 and press enter. Then change the horizontal alignment to right and click this button to apply the accounting number format. Awesome. Go ahead and click in the name box again. Enter B10 through G610. Press enter. Then right click, format cells. Then under the border tab, change the color to this light gray here. Click this to change the inside borders and click OK. Click in the name box again, enter I10 through I610, press enter, right click, format cells, change the border color to light gray. Click this to change the inside borders and click OK. The table looks good. All that's left is the numbers on top. Select C3, right click, format cells, move to the number tab, select number, add the thousand separator if you want, click OK. Select C4, click this button to add two decimal places. Next, select cell C6, right click, format cells, then under the number tab, select date and choose a date format. Or click custom, add your date format there, then click OK. Then click the format painter tool, select cell E4, and then you have to bold the font again and change the color back to blue. Finally, select G4, Right click, format cells, select number, add the thousand separator, and click OK. Then click the format painter tool and apply the same formatting to E7 through G7. And for the very last touch, select cell A10 and go to view, freeze panes, freeze panes. This will keep all of the top stuff in view whenever you scroll through the payment schedule. And just like that, you're done! Way to go on completing this build. I hope you love it and like this video if you had a good time. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you again soon in the next Spreadsheet Life video. You're like a circle that floats around me, keeping me safe sound and when i fall you've tied a rope to me you're blessing me every day